I'm about to show you the exact steps to take to learn calligraphy in as little time as possible without needing any special skills and without wasting your time or money. I've been doing calligraphy for a while now and I've learned that there's a pretty straightforward process you can follow to learn calligraphy without it taking a long time. So in this video, we'll go over the only three supplies you'll need, the five simple steps to start doing calligraphy today, and how to practice to get better faster. To start doing calligraphy or brush lettering, whatever you want to call it, all you need are three things, a brush pen, paper, and worksheets. Or you can skip the worksheets so you only need two things. So first, a brush pen. I recommend getting a Tombow Fudenosuke brush pen. They come in a two-pack like this with a hard tip and then a soft tip. I recommend starting with the hard tip pen, which has the navy blue colored barrel with silver accents. Then you'll need some paper. Ideally, you want to use smooth paper so it won't fray your brush pen tip. I recommend either Canson marker paper or just tracing paper because these are perfect for putting on top of worksheets and you can still see through them. If you're not using worksheets though, you'll want to get paper with lines or grids like Rhodia paper. And then for worksheets, you can look around online for free worksheets if you want to go that route, or I have a workbook made specifically for calligraphy beginners that I'll link in the description along with all of these other supplies that I mentioned. I also do have some free worksheets on my website that you can grab if you're just getting started. Those will be linked in the description too. So once you've got a brush pen, you just want to make sure you're holding it correctly. You want to hold it to the side of what you're writing, like this. So don't hold it below or anything like that, just hold it to the side. And then you also want to make sure you're holding it at about a 45 degree angle to the paper, like this. Don't hold it too straight up and down like this or anything like that. You just want to hold it at about an angle like this and to the side of your writing. Feel free to angle the paper any way you need to to make it more comfortable for you. And figure out a pen grip that feels comfortable for you, but also gives you good control of the pen. So you can play around with different grips, find something that's comfortable. Just avoid holding the pen really loosely. So as we start doing some of these exercises and using this pen, try to control the pen more with wrist movements instead of just really loosely with your fingers because you want to have good control of the pen. I also have an entire video about how to use a brush pen properly if you want to check that out. Then you'll want to practice using this pen to get thick and thin lines. So first, we're gonna use just the tip of the pen and press lightly and make strokes going in an upward direction. So we're using the tip of the pen and light pressure to get a thin line going upwards. Now we're going to do thick strokes going downwards. So press hard so you're using the side of the tip to get a thick line. Something important to remember is that in calligraphy, we do light or thin lines going up and hard or thick lines going down. So do some warm up exercises and practice that concept of light pressure up, heavy pressure down. So light up, heavy down, light up, heavy down, and just keep practicing that as you do some warm up exercises. So just do scribbles, marks, warm-up exercises, practice with your pen, and get comfortable with it before we start doing some calligraphy. Next step is to practice the basic strokes. So there are about eight basic strokes, and they're kind of like the building blocks of letters. So it's really important to practice these strokes before you start trying to write letters, or you'll probably just get really frustrated. So the first basic stroke is the entry slash exit stroke. This is a thin light line that has a slight curve to it. So we're using light pressure, the tip of the pen, and this stroke is going in an upwards direction. Next stroke is the overturn stroke. So this is like an upside down U shape. We come up here and then down on the other side with heavy pressure. The goal is to keep these two lines parallel. So you don't just want to do something like this. Instead, you want to keep the two sides of the stroke parallel. 
The third basic stroke is the underturn stroke, and this is just a U shape, so a reverse of the one we just did. We start coming down on the left side with heavy pressure, and then turn and come back up light. And once again, we want to keep those two sides of this stroke parallel. Next stroke is the compound curve. This is a combination of the two previous strokes. So we come up light, turn, come down with heavy pressure, and then we turn again and come back up light. And if you're feeling nervous, you can totally start practicing these strokes just with a pencil first before you even start using a brush pen. The next basic stroke is the oval. So we're going to start on the right side and come around in a counterclockwise direction. So start here on the right side, come up light, then turn, come down with heavy pressure, and then come back up light to meet where we first started that oval. And if it doesn't connect perfectly, that's totally okay. The next stroke is the reverse oval. So this is another oval just in the other direction. So this time we're going to start on the left side and move in a clockwise direction. So starting on the left side, we're going to come up light as we come down, heavy pressure, and then turn and lighten back up to finish out that oval shape. And for me, at least, the ovals are the trickiest of the basic strokes, so you're probably going to have to take a lot of time to practice these and work on getting them nice and consistent. And you'll notice that as I'm doing these strokes, I'm subtly adjusting the pressure I put on the pen. So you can notice how the pen tip is flexing as I lift and increase pressure. The next stroke is the ascending loop, and this one is twice the height of any of the other strokes. We're going to come up in a loop shape and then come down heavy pressure. The last basic stroke is the descending loop, and once again, this is twice the length of any of the other strokes, just in a downward direction. So with this one, we're coming downward with heavy pressure, then we turn and lighten pressure to loop back up. And those are the basic strokes of calligraphy. So if you practice these strokes over and over and try to work at getting them really consistent, you'll get better at calligraphy a lot more quickly. Now, once you've practiced the basic strokes, you can put them together to form letters. All of the lowercase letters in the calligraphy alphabet can be broken down into individual strokes, and they're mostly based off of these same eight basic strokes along with some variations or combinations. To write the letter A, we'll do an oval, and then we'll add an underturn stroke alongside it. And there we have a lowercase letter A. For the letter B, we'll do an ascending loop, then a reverse oval, and then an exit stroke. The letter C is a combination of the oval shape and then an exit stroke, and we do that all in one stroke. So that's an example of how some of these letters are also combinations of the basic strokes. The letter D is made up of an oval and then an ascending loop combined with an exit stroke all in one smooth stroke. And so on through the entire alphabet. All the letters are built up of these fundamental shapes, along with a handful of odd strokes for certain letters like K, R, and S. So once you know these basic shapes, you can put them together and write the entire lowercase alphabet in calligraphy. The next step is to put all these letters together into words. So let's write the word hello. We'll start with the first letter, H. And then when I write the next letter, I'm going to write it so that it just overlaps the finishing stroke of the H. Same with the letter L. I'm going to write it so that the downstroke just overlaps the finishing stroke of the E.
So you'll notice that each of the letters in the alphabet ends with some sort of exit stroke like this. These strokes serve as the connecting line to the next letter in a word. And that's how you connect letters and write words in calligraphy. Now, the next step is what nobody really wants to hear, which is keep practicing. But practice does not have to be boring. It can actually be really relaxing. So what exactly should you be practicing? First of all, if you're just getting started, you need to focus on practicing the basic strokes and just filling pages with those until you feel really comfortable with those. The better you are at the basic strokes, the better you'll be at calligraphy. Then you'll move on to practicing writing lowercase letters, and again, you'll do a lot of that, fill pages with each letter, work on getting really good at writing each letter, and then you'll move on to writing words. Once you're writing words, you can practice by just writing things. Write your to-do list, write names, write the days of the week, write quotes. Once you have put it all together into writing words, you can really practice in so many ways and have a lot of fun with it. And then, once you feel ready, you can learn an uppercase alphabet. Uppercase letters are a little more involved, which is why I'm not teaching those here. But if you want a complete workbook that teaches all of this stuff and uppercase letters and lots of practice words, check the description below this video where I'll put a link where I have that available for you. I also have an online course where I walk you through all of this and much more so you can go from zero experience or knowledge to confidently doing beautiful calligraphy with a brush pen that you can use just about anywhere. And the workbook I just mentioned is included in the course. So the link to learn more about that will also be in the description right below this video. But back to calligraphy practice, one of the keys to effective practice is repetition. So instead of practicing something just once or twice or a few times, fill entire pages with that stroke or letter or whatever you're practicing, and that will help you make way more progress. So some things to work on as you practice your calligraphy are checking for consistent angles and spacing. Using some sort of guidelines is super important for this. Also, trying to keep the shapes a consistent size, so breaking everything down to those individual strokes and working on keeping those consistent. Again, guidelines are a must. And you also want to practice smooth transitions, which are those areas where you transition from heavy pressure to light pressure or vice versa. And in my next video, I'm going to be sharing some tips for keeping those pesky transitions from thick to thin nice and smooth. So keep an eye out for that. And I hope this video was helpful for you and that you're feeling ready to give calligraphy a try.